In the heart of West Africa, a new leadership in Nigeria under President Tunubu is driving the country's economic destiny in a new direction. In this report, we delve into the first 100 days of his administration, a period that is shaping the nation's economic landscape. President Tunubu kicked off his 100 days right at his swearing-in ceremony when he vowed to grow the economy by at least 6% a year and through the country's multi-billion dollar full subsidy payments program into the dustbin. No provision is there for Fred subsidy. The Fred subsidy is gone. Those cutting raising pronouncements sent the local stock market soaring and Nigeria's dollar bonds railed. Riding on those accolades, the president suspended the central bank governor, Godwin Emefele, announced the unification of exchange rates and appointed a special advisor on monetary policy. I had promised to reform the economy for the long time good by fighting major imbalances that has plagued our economy, ending the subsidy and the preferential exchange rate system who are key to this fight. This fight is to defy the fate and future. These reforms are fundamental for the economy and are expected to have long-term payoffs. However, the path to those long-term benefits is bumpy with unexpected consequences as the Nara nose dived sharply around 40% and petrol prices jumped more than 200%. In a bid to shore up currency reserves and stem the fall of the Naira, the central bank announced some measures. But the administration needs to do more, and urgently too. On the fiscal side, the government threw in billions of Naira and palliative measures. The Tinubu's administration also announced tax reforms to stimulate investments, ease the burden on local industries and the civilians while extending the effective date of the new Finance Act 2023 until September the 1st. All of these were backed by four executive orders of the president to be driven by a new presidential committee on fiscal reforms. The mandate that this committee has is to get rid of so many taxes uh, that come in the way of prosperity for our people. So. Nigerians should look forward to a more harmonized, fewer number of taxes. Uh, but then it seems like it's, it's a contradiction. How do you then raise the revenue? Now, we know where we're going to get the revenue from. Uh, there's a huge tax gap. What that means is, as of today, without introducing any new taxes, if you get everyone that needs to pay their taxes to pay, uh, we will not be where we are. So we think that that task gap is somewhere in the region of 20 trillion naira. As Tinubu's reform on fuel subsidy removal takes effect, the government says significant savings of nearly 1 trillion naira is being accrued every month, boosting funds available for sharing from the Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAC. But how should this windfall be spent? The problem is always implementation, right? Some governors are getting it right. They are rolling out initiatives around transportation, agriculture. And so the state governors must not only think about short-term projects, but long-term projects, strengthening the sectors. If you talk about agriculture, value addition is very important. And so we want to see how many of them are setting up special economic zones. How many of them are setting up manufacturing centers for people to take their raw materials, take their agriculture, produce and you know uh, what's it called and um, manufacture it or you know ensure that there's value added to it so there's not just raw commodities being exported and so our farmers have to be empowered because the cost of food is going up inflation is going up all the while the structure of the new administration began to take shape within the first hundred days with the screening of new ministries by the National Assembly their portfolio announcements, and other strategies to address naughty issues such as fiscal balance, debt, and a stubbornly high inflation. The clarity needed on these and more started to unravel as the new cabinet members spoke about their new assignments and what to expect. Taking the centre stage on this was the Minister of Finance and the Coordinating Minister of the Economy, 
Wale Edu, when he outlined the vision for Nigeria's economic future based on President Tinubu's campaign eight-point agenda. He has pointed out in eight priority areas where he's going to take Nigeria. And his key priorities are to improve the lives of Nigerians by providing food security, by ending poverty. His plan for the economy is economic growth, job creation, access to capital, particularly consumer credit that makes goods affordable to the average Nigerian. In the meantime, the labor unions have called out two national strike actions in the first 100 days of the administration, protesting the painful impact of his full and foreign exchange policies. The manufacturers are also in pain, reporting some 30% decline in sales between April and June, as well as rising costs of operations. Nigerians have also expressed their thoughts on Tinubu's reform so far. This is a time where our policymakers and our leaders must be very humble and ask for help even when they do not know because we don't have the money right now. And what we have is our human resource. We have our human resource all over the world. We have Nigerians who are the best brains, even running other governments. Ministries, heads of agencies should not be afraid to ask for help right so like i said there've been some square pegs in, in 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 square holes we've seen some of these you know reforms and plans but implementation is what we really need and this is a time where i must urge our governors especially our governors because right now people used to complain that from fac they didn't get enough allocation now you have the allocations this is not a time to just settle your own people this is the time to think about your legacy think about long term projects that will really catalyze growth, that will create jobs, not just jobs, create wealth. The only way to solve poverty is to create wealth. And we, we have a lot of Nigerians that are entrepreneurial. We have a youth population. Let us use those things to our advantage. Look at the softer sectors like the creative industry. Some of those sectors have not even been tapped. So we need a government that can really go close to the people and find out what their pain points are and co-create the solutions with them. From sharply lower Naira value to higher fuel prices, leaner disposable income and new fiscal policy directions, the first 100 days of the Tinubu's administration have been anything but tough. The government, however, believes that these pains are necessary to chart a new horizon of economic stability and prosperity for all, asking Nigerians to hang on to what Mr. President described as a renewed hope for Africa's biggest economy and its 200 million people. Nkechi Nana, Arise News.